What is up, everybody? What's up, man? It's uh, Johnny King with another episode of the Becoming Kings podcast. And I'm thrilled to have my homeboy on the podcast, Ray De La Nuez. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm amazed uh, at your pronunciation, to be honest with you. <laughs> I have to Dude. say, I, I'm really I'm, I'm really blown away by the fact, you know, I'm not just saying that because you're white, okay? <laughs> I, I'm saying that because I like the focus. Yeah, well, it, I will have to give all the credit to, to Duolingo. <laughs> I've been working on this. I've got my <laughs> shit. You see that 500 day streak? I'm is this a, is this a like sponsored that. episode? <laughs> yeah, I wish, but no, I wish, I wish. But I'm working on my Spanish. Do you speak fluently Spanish? Claro que sí, claro que sí. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we were you were saying before we started recording, you're from the Dominican. Yeah, yeah. Born and raised um, in a little little hut. In the, in the slums of Dominican Republic with a tin roof, you know, rats crawling over me while I slept, cockroaches on my body while I was like, uh, yeah, I'm, I am 29 years old and terrified of rats. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably, you yeah. and uh, Indiana Jones, um, that's, uh, that's crazy. And you said you moved here 22 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So when you're seven years old, yeah. what, what made the, the move to, to the U.S.? Man, I, you know, I, I'll be 100% honest, uh, and I don't think I've ever shared this before, but you know, Dominican Republic has one of the highest rates, I think maybe the highest rate in the world of contract marriages next to China, and we're oh. not a very big country, oh. uh, but, but uh, enough people have seen success in that, and then they replicate yeah. it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. <clears throat> um, I will say that I, I believe, I know that my stepfather um, was wanting to help some children and, and, a, and a woman who were mm. just living in the slums. Uh, but they're still together today, you know, after Crazy. 25 years. Yeah. Crazy. They, they, I mean, they had that child of their own. They still live together. They're happily married. So it's one of those things, man. Go figure, huh? Go figure. And yet it's not like, uh, as, as a bunch of my Indian buddies say, love marriages. It's not like those have been working out any mm. higher percentage than, than their, uh, at least in India, you know, and call it contract marriage or sure the what's the other ordained uh, like pre or pre arranged yeah. yes yes yep 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 yeah. um so it's it's two people that are willing and committed to do the work you know yeah so i think that's uh that's fascinating well without without going too too much further into the conversation i want those to that are listening and who don't know you to to understand that you are very similar uh to me in terms of the the passion and the drive that you are you know pouring into the world not only are you um in the marine corps you're an officer but uh, and i want to get more into the kind of the details but you have your own podcast called becoming men which is so so perfect that this is the becoming kings and and i've been on the show which which i'm so grateful for and now uh, you're thankfully uh returning the favor and being on my show letting me kind of dive into to who you are and what you've got going on but you're a coach a men's life coach you're a speaker writer host of the podcast of your, of your podcast, obviously. And then, like I said, you're an active duty Marine Corps officer, which is pretty amazing. So tell, tell those uh, that are brand new to you a little bit more of your 30 second elevator pitch of kind of what you stand for and what you're doing in the world. Cause we've got oh, a lot man. in common. 30 seconds puts me on the spot. <laughs> 30, I, I, 30 seconds, 30 minutes. And it's really counting down now. Cause I'm, <laughs> yeah. now I'm using this time and then this time explaining that. So <laughs> oh, shit. Let's, in let's the next start 20 over. seconds, I will <laughs> <Yeah. tell. laughs> no, man, I, I have floundered. I've wasted time. I have done all of the things <clears throat> that you could do wrong. Uh, put my identity in the things that you should not have your identity in. And then I showed up to the marriage bed wanting to make it work. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. It does not work. Um, mm -hmm. When you don't take charge of your masculine journey, when you don't identify who it is that you want to become and then pursue that with all the energy that you have and the help of God, um, mm -hmm. you're in for a rude awakening and a lot of hurt, unfortunately. Yeah. And I, yeah. can, I can only say that from experience from a man who um, <clears throat> sobbed uh, uh, inside of his Marine Corps to issue sleeping bag at 11 o'clock at night on a beach in Southern California, who has only been married for four months and his wife left him, mm. you know? Mm. No. Was that before your current marriage to Natasha? So that is Natasha. Uh, and okay. that's, a, that, that's where the redemption comes in, right? Cause mm. uh, at the end of the day, you get to do it right. Or you get an opportunity if you have a graceful woman to do it the right way. And then <laughs> to come back around and actually become the man that you were created to be. And, mm. and that's, that's really what I aim to do, man, is to show men 
these practical steps, right? Uh, I'm not about just giving you a one, two, three, but there are principles uh, right. that we can abide by that get us exactly to where we're going. But without perfectly defining that, we're just we're just wandering. Yeah, amen to that. And and you got a, a second chance with with the same woman. I did not, and I I had uh, I guess knock on wood, grateful that there weren't any kids involved. But now you guys, you have the redemption story, which I'd love to get into also, but you guys have yeah. now three beautiful children, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right, that's man. Amazing. That's I amazing. got a, I got a six, four, two year old, get this. They're all born within the same 10 days in February. And amazing. I know what you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> what holiday? What yeah. holiday? Yeah. Memorial day weekend. That, that's, yeah. what it is. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh man. That's cool. Well, I, I, I can only imagine, um, still, you know, learning about you just you know, the, this core message of becoming men, you know, being, yeah. being the best version of ourselves, uh, working through healing our trauma, becoming the, ultimately the, the best man that, that you can be so that you're proud of yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also then becoming obviously the best father, the best husband, the best, uh, leader officer, everything else. Yeah. But what, what tell, tell again, those that are listening, they're learning more about you you know, a little bit more of your backstory of what that was like. I mean, you were obviously old enough to remember a lot about the, the, you know, Dominican and then yeah. what was that like, you know, contract marriage moving into the U S like, what was your childhood like? And was there anything having to do with your relationship with your stepfather, your biological father? Was there, is there a father wound at all there that, that you've worked through or that are you, you are working through? Man, you're, yeah. you're hitting all of the, the big <laughs> and right questions, man, because yeah. that was the setup, right? And a lot of times we don't, we don't look at it that way. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at it realistically, like you were set up for either success because some man intentionally did the right things, took mm -hmm. the right actions intentionally is the key word. And you are where you are right now. You're proud of the man that you see in the mirror. You wake up in the morning, you're okay with seeing that face and you smile and your wife smiles and she shines because you did a good job and the guy before you did a good job. Right. But unfortunately that, that wasn't the case for me. Uh, I'm a child uh, of a man who was more of a sperm donor than anything else. Uh, yeah. I have 11 brothers and sisters uh, with six different, that was with six different women. Those are just the ones that he impregnated. Turns out that his father, right? My, my grandfather on my dad's side did the same exact thing. And that's how my, my dad was created. So mm -hmm. long and behold, it's a generational thing that continued up to me. Um, and so real early on, uh, just being in the Spanish culture and where I'm from, I learned that your value, your identity as a man and is, is in how many women you can get yep. uh, to sleep with you. Uh, it's in how many uh, achievements you can collect and, you know, the respect that you have, right? The right. street cred. And so I, that's what I set out to do. Like any, you know, 14, 15 year old dude just out there trying to learn how to be a man. And, and really that was my biggest fault is that I was out there trying to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. I was a, a very proud self acclaimed man. <clears throat> um, my stepfather was not emotionally uh, and mostly physically present while, while I was growing up. And so that left me to just go out there and search for it. I became a really good uh, wrestler. It just was a natural ability. And mm -hmm. so, you know, before you know it, like, I'm on podiums and I'm getting all this attention. I'm like, I love that. Right. So I, I chase some dream into college and trying to do the same thing until I face plant. Right. And I completely find myself in and over my head uh, dealing with these wounds because I woke up to this idea, this reality that like, oh man, I don't know what I'm actually doing. I'm stressed the heck out, you know, from this, from doing school, doing wrestling, like this is a D one school, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing all the partying that I'm doing, sleeping around with women. And I'm like, I just, I grew, I grew into this like stage of anxiety, but I didn't, I couldn't call it that at the time. So you know what I did? I said, what's the next best thing I could do? I could drop out of college and join the Marine Corps. Right. Mm -hmm. These are, again, these are subconscious thoughts that I'm able to point back to now and say, yeah, this is yeah. what, what was going on. But yeah. in the moment I, I thought I was just doing the next best thing because the Marine Corps was going to teach me how to be a man. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. I, uh, mm -hmm. but it turns out that when you take the man, uh, you know, common quote, you take the man out of the hood, but you don't take the hood out of the man, right? Like mm -hmm. those things are still mm -hmm. in me. So then mm -hmm. I just went and replicated the same things in the Marine Corps. Uh, mm -hmm. But this time I, I got a woman involved and that's, that's where it led me with Natasha, man. But was stepping into the Marine Corps something that was instrumental in terms of then you had actual 
decent, if not amazing male role models that kind of helps guide 100%. you and, and mold you. Okay. 100%. So that, that, that probably was a saving grace then for you. Then, yes. then if you just stayed in college and gotten out of school and then just kept oh, yeah. on running old patterns for decades, potentially. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. God used that in my life for that. Like I, yeah. I've grown so much over the last decade uh, that I can look back now and be like, man, I am a completely different person than I was 10 years ago. Uh, thankfully, because I've had, you know, all the way from generals down to, you know, PFCs right next to me. Yeah. You know, when I, when I'm just an E2 in the military, like these guys who are just rubbing alongside me and coming alongside me, teaching me, showing me things. And, and these are again, principles, ideas, thoughts that are foundational uh, to the, to the masculine journey. Totally. Totally. Well, going back to uh, kind of the, the 12, 13, 14, 15 year old who began wrestling, that sort of thing. You know, I, I can certainly see, in myself and in a, in a lot of men when they're driven by their as i call it away from values that i learned from tony robbins like the things that you know i don't want to be become my father or it's a fucking chip on their shoulder you yeah. know they're angry uh i've been driven in, in a lot of that way for myself included and i've had to learn like when you start to heal those parts inside you to where then you really begin being driven by you know the, the things that you really want to attract right? Yeah. Um, when did that shift? Because at least, and I'm, I'm kind of assuming, but it seems like at least how I experience you now, you are driven by core values that are spiritually aligned with, with your heart and your purpose versus being that, maybe that, that kid who was like, fuck men, like no one showed me how to do it. So I'm just going to quote unquote, fight my way to the top. Yeah. You know, well, how did that shift? When did that happen? Was that in the Marine Corps? Was it earlier? Was it later? No. Was it in your marriage? Like, yeah, that good question. Happen? Yeah. Good question, man. I, you know, going back to that night that I described to you, I kind of put a comma there, but the, the, the story continues. Yeah. There's a, a night where I find myself 11 o'clock at night inside my Marine Corps issued sleeping bag on the beach in Southern California, bawling my eyes out. My wife mm. left me and I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> mm. I, I'm just like, I don't even know what to cry about it, but it was like, so, there was just so much there. Mm. And for some weird reason, I, I get onto a website and there was a man who was doing life coaching and he was like, I help men like get through their junk, uh, things that they, you know, can't talk through about in church. And I'm paraphrasing here, like things that were places where you feel stuck yada yada yada. So I call him right then and there <laughs> he's sleeping. And he tells me this now to this day, cause he, he's still my mentor, my coach. And he tells me, I, I did not want to pick up the phone. I wasn't going to pick up the phone and something told me that I needed to. And so he grabbed the phone, picked it up. He's like, Hey, how can I help? He listened to me for like 20 minutes, you know, frantically uh, going on about my situation. And he yeah. says, we start tomorrow, <clears throat> right? Like cool. we start cool. in the morning and, and that right there began an initiation uh, of, of the masculine heart that I needed mm. by a man who wasn't just going to, he wasn't just going to tell me to buck up. He wasn't just going to, uh, tell me, you know, the guru stuff, the one, two, threes, the, um, the things that I shouldn't do or point out my flaws. No, this was a guy who was going to listen. And he did. He, he, he engaged with me, right? He became part of my journey, right? He wasn't a crush that I could lean on. He would actually call me out when I was, when I was, uh, you know, trying to bluff myself, right? Because yeah. denial is not just a, an Egypt and river, uh, a river in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, it happens to also be something deeply rooted inside of the masculine heart. Yeah. And so that that's where the switch came, man, being able to get tied in with other men, because from mm -hmm. that from that one conversation came other uh, conversations with men around me, men who I said, then I started to draw men into my life who were wow. on the same journey. Mm. Powerful. And it, it, it makes me think and I know I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff on social media of yours and, uh, you know, even just as you're talking about, like the calling upon the masculine heart, it, it takes me back to having my moment, I wasn't in a, you know, in a sleeping bag, but I was certainly bawling after my ex had left me and, and was dissolving our marriage. And it made me think of <clears throat> Wild at Heart, which I imagine maybe you've read by yeah. John Eldridge. And he just talks about, uh, you know, so fascinating that a, a lot of this, well, all the stories in the Bible of men that we still talk about and read about 2000 yeah. plus years later, that God didn't save them from going into the fiery furnace 
or you know uh, the lion's den or whatever before it happened. He allowed yeah. it to like God deliver them out of chaos, you know, out of the depths of despair in those moments when they finally surrendered and got down on their knees and said, okay, enough of uh, me attempting to control yeah. this, you know, God, please. And that's allowed me honestly to say, okay, God, like this is so fucked up. I don't know how to get myself out of this, but please. And, and that's when I got some angel messages that kind of shifted my, my journey, but sounds like very much God was being directed or God was directing you and guiding you and him to pick up the phone for you to actually take action and pick up the phone. That's a lot of that stuff was kind of divinely yeah. orchestrated. Would you say? Oh man, a hundred percent. It It is yeah. my no accident that that happened. Yeah. And I think for us to ever think that things happen on accident, um, that they're just kind of a, a fluke in the story. Like, mm -hmm. no, let's, let's not forget, like God is the creator and we, we get so hung up on puns, right? Like we're, we're so impressed by puns and like by a good story that like has one thing come in at the end that you never would have expected. Like, let's not forget God is a good a storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's exactly what it was with me. I, this was just the right time, a divine appointment that came in where I needed it, but you're right. I needed to get to the end of me so that I can get mm -hmm. to the beginning of Jesus, right? And, mm -hmm. and this was this was so foundational because the entire time what I was doing is just what every good man does. Like the guys listening right now, that I'm sure they 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 want to become kings, right? They want to do something better than what they did yesterday. They want to advance whatever kingdom they are carrying. They want to advance mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But there, so many times we we were caught up in doing this in our own strength and by our own abilities not realizing that like we ourselves lack so much, mm -hmm. right. And, and not even just from like having God help us, but like understanding we were made for community and relationship with people around you. And so it's no, it's no, uh, it's no fluke in the story that the guy that lives right next door has like the answer that you need. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you have the, the humility and willingness to, like I said, pick up the phone or to ask yeah. for help. I think that's the first step is to actually acknowledge like, Hey, I'm struggling, mm -hmm. which I think is so good about your show from the, the episodes I've listened to and the stuff that I see on, on social media, the stuff that I've, of course I'm doing that I see with so many of the different men's coaches. It's, it's like normalizing uh, it being okay to ask for directions, AKA like yes. help me because I'm struggling, you know? Yes. So I think that's a big part of it, but in, in your, in your, leadership probably not only in work but just in your life and what i see on like i said social media and your work with men encouraging them and empowering them uh to become the men that that god has created them to be what that, that sounds nice but then how can you put it into layman's terms or just everyday words like what what does a man look like uh, if they are created in the image and likeness of God, like how are you helping men step into their fullness uh, beyond the, the, the lies of limiting beliefs or that they're not enough or that they're not loved? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, let's get, let's get real Marine Corps uh, for mm -hmm. a second. Um, I learned right after a decade of serving in, in this institution, the most important thing in any combat order is not what we're going to go do. Mm -hmm. right? That's the scheme of maneuver. Tactically, what does it look like boots on the deck? Like that is the responsibility of a commander to give you that. Right. But he does not limit you because he doesn't, he's not going to be on the battle space when this happens or directly in the front of the, uh, of the enemy. And so what he equips you with is something called commander's intent. Mm -hmm. And commander's intent means if all else fails, this must happen. Right. It, it, it equips everybody who's involved in the mission to understand if you are going to bring anything to the fight, make sure that it is for this one thing and this thing gets accomplished. And, and, and here, I'll give it to you a little practically. You know, while I was training some midshipmen, we would put them on these leadership exercises. We'd send them out there and we would say, hey, on order, you need to go rescue a downed pilot and get key intel that is going to trans that's going to affect the next mission. Right. And so what we do is we get them to have a firefight somewhere in between. Then we allow them to get to the down pilot. They grab the down pilot and they leave hundred percent of the time they leave because they never pay attention to the entire reason why they're there. Right. They mm -hmm. think it's just, 
get out of the firefight, get the down pilot, leave. I told you, you need to get the intel that is going to drive the next mission, Mm -hmm. right? And that's what happens with life. Like you're so engaged with all of the things coming coming at you from left and right that you completely forget, like, what is my purpose? What is the commander's intent? Right. Mm-hmm. And so for men, I, I give this to, to give them pretty practically. Right. So that if I use the word become, right, becoming kings, becoming men, I break that up into B, begin with your why, get your commander's intent. E, envision your future. C, you got to capture the who before the do. Mm-hmm. O, you got to outline your greedy goals. M, you got to mimic the character of a man who accomplishes those goals Mm -hmm. and then finally e you got to execute those small habits Mm. and so being able to walk men through that to begin with that first step like i told you begin with just let's get to the commander's intent what is your purpose here that is foundational and that really is the thing that takes the most time and it's the thing that it just so happens like we don't do (laughs) right Right. Like talk to any guy in the street and he can tell you like what his goal is for the rest of the year. Guys, yeah. there's there's like 70 something days left for the year. I'm, I'm sure you have something you want to accomplish or yeah. here on January 1st, a bunch of guys are going to start getting some goals together. Right. They're going to have these New Year's resolutions and completely forget that they have every every, you know, uh, thing coming against them so that they'll actually just fall into that 80 to 90 percent of men that actually forfeit their um, New Year's resolutions before Valentine's Day. Right. Because they're right. not equipped with a why. Right. What do you think? So it's the, it's, it's, yes, I, all that resonates deeply with me. It's, it's the why. And I think also it's, it's the, it's the common conversation that I have with men too, which is like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm unclear with the direction I'm going. I don't, I feel like I'm just kind of wasting my life away. And I don't know really what my purpose is in just going to work, making money, coming home, rinse and repeat. You know, it's Groundhog's Day. Yeah. And it's frustrating. And, and I, and I certainly lived that up to the age of yeah, 29, 30, when the world kind of came crashing down on me. It's just like, yeah. Well, yeah, what, what is this all for? Because you start to realize shit, like life starts going by, you know, mm-hmm. fast and you're starting to see more here. and more in the rear view mirror than yeah. you are like, you know, but you got to be driven. And I think a, a big part of being driven is not about being driven for significance as it is like being driven mm-hmm. towards contribution and, and driven towards growth or becoming, like you said, becoming men, becoming the best version of yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I guess the, that's, that's the question I have is in the work that you're doing, especially with guys that are, you probably see, you know, remnants of yourself and men that are just coming into the military now, you know, looking for something, you know, they're looking for something, whether it be a father figure or they're looking for a purpose or looking for, you know, you know, brotherhood. Uh, How are you going about, intentionally showing up and and leading those men on a day-to-day basis is that is that i'm sure it's one of probably the most fulfilling parts of your job but also most challenging like how do you how do you take those guys to the paces and what's kind of the, the your favorite part of it all yeah that's a really good question uh, i i've actually had the opportunity a very unique opportunity to be able to serve as an enlisted marine first mm. uh, and then i got to the rank of staff sergeant before i transitioned into being being an officer with that comes the experience that you need to be able to relate to the guys on the ground. Right. Uh, and, and it really gives you some, it gives you some brownie points with the troops because they, they feel like you're what you were one of the boys uh, mm-hmm. before you joined the dark side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, right now where I am, especially like I still engage, I do see those men. You're right. I, I see those pieces of me coming in and I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I, it's so clear. I could see it. I could see it, man. Like, and, and I think just to make guys a little self-conscious, like, you exude your desires. You exude your inner passions. You might not know it, but like when you're so thirsty for attention or when you're so thirsty for like somebody to approve you, you might think that you're just like, I'm just posting this quick pic <laughs> or I'm just going to do this thing for, for this person, you know, just because, uh, you know, because it's going to help them. Like, no, dude, you're looking for validation. Did somebody tell you you're doing a good job to, for you to prove to yourself that you have what it takes, mm-hmm. right? And like, mm-hmm. it, guys, we think, we think we hide it so well. We really don't. So to get to your question, when I, when I see these guys, man, I, I get this joy in knowing that I can connect with them on a one-to-one-on-one basis. 
And this is really counter to what we see right now on social media and just on, uh, just on all platforms. And it's actually something I, ha I have to battle with. And maybe mm -hmm. you can relate too, because you equate following to impact and it's so not true, mm -hmm. right? You look at these guys, you're like, man, what would I be able to do with mm -hmm. a million followers? But then you don't realize like, dude, you have 10 followers <laughs> that yeah. are in your office right now that, that desire your input, your feedback, mm -hmm your leadership, right? And I think the biggest, the biggest compliment that I've gotten here recently from one of some, some of my troops is a man, a, a man, I have to say man, I can't even say Marine, right? Because you're, he's a man first. I, and I always have to remember that. He says, sir, would you be able to meet with me in private? I said, yes. And I went to him, I met with him one-on-one. -on -one, and he says, sir, I just want to talk to you because I feel like I can trust you um, and I can, I can really put this out there to you. And, you know, it, it's only you and maybe one other person that I can trust at work. And then he tells me what's going on. And man, I just sat there like, whoa, this man who I've, you who really, the only thing we have in common is, you know, that we know is he works for me, right? I really, I work for him uh, as an officer. That's like the officer mm -hmm. thing to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're trying to get the mission accomplished. But something about my presence, something about what I'm doing on a daily basis, my walk matches my talk, mm -hmm. allows him to feel like, hey, I can bring him in. And you know what? I'm just as happy with the 10 dudes that invite me in, that I'm able to disciple, to mentor, to coach, yeah. Yeah. than the millions of people that might follow me on social media and maybe mm -hmm. like something and subscribe to something. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it means nothing. Totally. Totally. I saw um, a, a guy give a speech a couple of weekends ago and, and th the whole foundation of his speech was that moved people, move people. Mm. And my experience again of you is that, you know, especially with your, just your relationship with, with Jesus and your, your higher beliefs that you are moved in, in what you are in everything that you do. You know, yeah. I, I experienced that, which again, I think uh, inspires people. It makes them trust you because they realize this is not about you and your own sense of, personal ego little little e ego it's about the the capital e ego yeah. you know which is it's really cool so just you know credit to you because what you're putting out there i certainly you know pick up on that just in, in what you're putting out there on social media so kudos sure. to you on that which is I appreciate great that. yeah yeah um i guess the the a, a bigger question that is rolling around in my head right now too is that man you talked about your father your grandfather um, a lot of us men who are doing the work now are up against whether it be generational trauma, generational, sh like shame of generational behaviors, you know, and whether our past parent and grandparent and great, great grandparent were alcoholics, you know, or struggling. How have you personally been doing your work as I'm sure it just continues to, to, to go on of forgiving, moving on, like rectifying some of those relationships that maybe you don't even physically have with your biological father and, you know, grandfather and siblings or, you know, <laughs> extended family. How, yeah. cause that's that, I do feel like a lot of that kind of transfers through us ener energetically sure. um, for, for either positive or maybe not so positive ways in our yeah. lives. But how have you gone about kind of healing that inner child of a lot of the trauma that I can't imagine, you know, not just feeling very safe growing up, you know, when you were really little and how is, have you seen that impact you as you were getting older and have you worked on it? I should be like, have you been working through that or is that something that you're still, it's on your plate to, to work through? No, man. Um, I have worked through it and I guess I have to be, I have to be 100% honest about that experience. Uh, it was not something that I wanted to do naturally, yeah. right? This wasn't something that I just woke up one morning and was like, I want to go through all of the trauma, pain and hurts that I've had as a child so that I can grow and become the band that I was intended to be. Right. Like <laughs> that doesn't happen guys. And I, yeah. I think if you're waiting for that day, uh, just so you know, it's not going to come. Yeah. Thankfully I had somebody usher me into that. And you know, uh, this, my, one of my coaches, his name's Andy. Um, he, he never pressed in a way that was inappropriate. But he asked these deep questions. Like, what do you think about that? 
Mm. Well, I don't know, Andy, I've never thought about it. He's like, okay, well, let's take the time to think about it. Like, well, there's other things I want to talk about. Uh, let me run this business plan by you. He's like, mm -hmm. no, I think we should talk about your dad. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, yeah. and long behold, man, it, it came to a point where I did it wrong and then I did it right. Mm. Here's what I mean. I went through what happened to me, right? As an adult, I realized that my dad worked less than two miles from where I lived. And I barely saw the man. <laughs> so mm -hmm. while I lived there, I, he could have fully uh, been born in my life. And it just, it didn't happen. So, you know, the pain, is, the pain was deep. And it was, it's so embarrassing as a grown man. I'm a, I'm a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. I have a child. I'm married. And I genuinely desire my dad to give me affirmation that my wife is beautiful. My home is, is nice. Yeah. That my job means something. And that he wronged me <laughs> and that he yeah. made a big mistake by not choosing me. Right. Yeah. That you made something of yourself. Yeah. 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 And I held on to that. And that's what I mean by, I did it wrong. Right. Like I went through, so I did it kind of right, wrong, right. <laughs> I did the hard stuff and got to the pain. When I was at the pain, I wanted to get revenge or I wanted to be vindicated. I wanted him to apologize and say, sorry. And guess what? I never got <laughs> I never got apology. an apology. I never yeah. got a sorry. So, so I put up, I put a period there and this is what, here's what I mean. There's a guy listening right now that it's like, yeah, I had something like this happen to me. My dad really screwed me up and now I can look at my life, look at myself and I'm repeating that period. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, there's these men in my life that really showed me, you know, the way that I ought to not go. And here I am. And I'm just a product of my environment period. Like, no, 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 no. Buddy, let, let's, let's go back to your ninth grade English class where your teacher tried to teach you about punctuation, mm -hmm. right? Like sometimes we have run on sentences and we need to stop that too, <laughs> right? Like some things do involve periods and commas, but I think a lot of times when we put periods and we end a story or end a thought, we actually need to put a comma and say, but, and for me, it was, but God, right? Or somebody else is like, but this is actually what's going to happen after that or what I'm doing to change that. And so again, going back to the, I did a right, wrong, right. After I had realized that I was now sitting with this pain that I had revealed and exposed and I was doing it the wrong way. I then realized, okay, hold on. This has been, this has been revealed to me. I now have access to the pain that hurt, that, that wounded me, the thing that wounded me. But that means I also have access to the thing that is going to heal me, right? Because we, we don't realize like if relationships hurt you, it's going to be relationships that heal you. Mm -hmm. that's very counterintuitive if you mm -hmm. see a snake and it bites you the next thing the next time you see a snake what are you going to want to do get away from it exactly yeah, yeah. But, but the human dynamic is not that the more you run away from something the more it's going to stay in your mind and the more it's yeah. going to haunt over you right if i tell you right now stop thinking about the pink elephant stop thinking about the pink elephant every single guy right now is thinking about a pink elephant no matter how mm -hmm. much he tries to not think about it mm -hmm. right like the more you try to run away from that like we don't think in the negative and so by purposing to be intentional about pressing forward and through mm -hmm. right get from one battle hill to the next although you know you just lost you just took casualties and it doesn't look too great up ahead but damn it you got to plant your flag on top of that hill when it gets that serious to a man he's gonna succeed mm -hmm. and it starts with that comma comma but we press forward and we kept going and now look because i have two boys who man uh, two boys and a girl who I'm so amazed, right, at the, the level of maturity that is in them, the level of understanding, but it came from the intentionality to do it right and the massive action that it takes to move from where you were yesterday, bridging the gap to where you want to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm snapping, snapping on those. I'm, yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh, golf golf clapping it. yeah so so powerful i feel like a lot of it um resonates with with whatever also heard you say it takes uh grit and intentionality and the massive action you yeah. know and, and and what you just talked about encapsulated all of those things because it takes certainly takes massive action but sometimes we can take massive action in the wrong direction you know yeah. um and if if we are scared of you know stepping into our fears a lot of times like 
like I've gotten bit by that snake. I'm taking massive action away from it. Yeah. You don't ever get to demonstrate, you know, uh, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like healing that relationship with snakes or That's with true. women or with dad or with mom, you know, or with God. I know a lot of guys that are really angry at God and, and you know, it kind of mirrors their anger at their parents and, and life is so difficult and so hard. And a lot of that is taking massive action, I think, intentionally into the area that's going to require the most grit. Yeah. But when I've heard you talk about grit, I'm, I'm kind of curious, how do, how do you define what, what grittiness is made up of and why, why it's so important in, in a lot of what you talk about with, with men and, and doing the work? Yeah. I remember I signed myself up to go to a martial arts instructor's course in the Marine Corps. I was a corporal and I I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I had, there was, people don't talk about it, right? Like that's the point, but you just go away to this three week course and you come back as a martial arts instructor. And we like, you know, whenever you get a bunch of men together, like there's this tribe that creates naturally, like we create tribes, we create like these mini cultures, we create clubs that are exclusive. And so there's some exclusivity there. And uh, I remember hearing about just wait till Black Friday, wait till Black Friday. And there's three Black Fridays in a three week period. Um, And my first Black Friday, I started on a station which was intended to get me very tired. I moved on to the next one, which got me extremely tired. I moved on to a third, fourth, fifth, all the way to the seventh station. And I was just dead. And I was like, okay, man, that's what they mean by Black Friday. Like I, I, I see black, I'm about to pass out. Yeah. But then I needed to move on to the eighth station and the eighth station happened to be one of the instructors, a two tab, uh, a red tab black belt instructor. Uh, This is the same guy who just got off a combat deployment where he just told us that a Afghan had just jumped on him and grabbed him from the back and he pulled out a knife from his from his uh, flak jacket and started stabbing behind him. Right. Mm -hmm. Like this is not a a, this is a bad dude. Right. Scout Mm -hmm. sniper type. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm now about to square off with him in the ring, right? And so I'm, I'm kind of just like in, a, in this like mindset of, okay, I just have to survive. Mm. I just have to make it. If I could just make it till the end of this period, whatever that is, I, 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 think, I, can, I, can, I think I can do this. Mind you, I've already gone through seven stations. I'm dead. I'm seeing black. I shake hands with it and I tap. And, and he grabs my neck and pulls me down. And that jerks me. It's like, okay, we're using strength here. So here I am, I'm going at him. And then I feel somebody pulling behind me. I'm like, what's going on here? Another instructor is trying to get my, my back, right? Mm-hmm. And so, okay, now I'm being attacked by two grown men, right? Th- yes, this is a controlled environment, but you got to understand right. in order to make the Marines that you want to fight your battles, America, there's mm-hmm. some things that need to happen behind closed doors in the training arena, uh, that you might not want to know about. Right. 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 And so I'm like, okay, two guys, like there's no more just surviving. Right. Like now I, I actually got out of the idea or the mindset that we're just training. And now I'm like trying to like save my life. life. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, I couldn't make this up. A third instructor comes in and tries to do a small arm manipulation on my hand. I continued and the fight continued me against three grown men. After I had been pooped, tired, completely yeah. worn out, right? I'm not going to tell you. I, I, I got my ass kicked. I lost, <laughs> right? Like I was being, I tapped. I had to verbally tap because I no longer had one of my legs. I no longer had one of my arms. And the other guy is trying to stuff me, stuff his, his body on my face so that I couldn't breathe. Mm. Psychologically, I was beat. Mentally, uh, physically, I was beat. But I know that something happened in me in that day and many other days like it. And it was this thing of proving to yourself that if those situations ever came about, you're not just going to get through it. You're going to grind through it. You're not just going to try your hardest just to survive. You are going to thrive. You are going to come out of this thing, kicking and screaming, biting and eye gouging. And I think when we now turn and apply that to anything in life, right, man, I just lost my job. Um, I can't make my payments on my mortgage. And I'm also being attacked by uh, somebody who wants child support. Mm -hmm. That's three, that's three opponents at once. 
who are you going to be at the end of the fight? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be victorious? Are you going to win? And even if you take a couple cuts and a couple bruises, are you going to be proud of the man that you see in the mirror? Because that man has to be gritty in order to get through it. He has to have grit and tenacity. Again, the word intentionality has to be in there Mm -hmm. and he has to want it. And so grit to me means that, man. I, I, I want to give a word picture because I feel like it means so much more. Grit means pursuing, continuing, even when you feel like you have no chance. Mm-hmm. But damn it, you know your why. You have the commander's intent and you're going to execute. Yeah. The, the commander's intent that resonates with what, you're, what you just, that story you gave and uh, a bunch of the other things you, you said, just for me, the, the value that I put so much on freedom, not only obviously uh, being a, a patriot and a, an American and that sort of thing, but just as a human being, you know, yeah. whether it be again, religious freedoms or uh, freedom to, to speak whatever I want to speak and do what I want to do. Like it's something that's so easy for me to take for granted until I travel around the world. And they're like, Oh shit. Like, you know, I'm in the middle East and in Oman and uh you know even dubai and india and so many i'm like there's a lot of things that are westernized and yet there's so much that i take for granted until i come back here but i do yeah. feel like that uh that commander's intent if, if that's what you said being like man i i find myself getting extremely gritty <laughs> when i feel like i'm losing my freedom you know mm, and it and it, and, that's it good. and it pisses me off but that what makes me so committed to my own growth is realizing that i've been kind of shackled by my limiting beliefs or my father wound, my mother wound, uh, all the things that I feel like maybe I took on unconsciously as a little boy, you know, that I'm yeah. having to, to break free from now, you know, and I, and I imagine that's kind of like a lot of the work that you do with men too, who are reaching out to you, listening to this podcast, even resonating with you and be like, man, I, I need to set myself free, you know? Yeah. And so I, I feel like a lot of that is done through your coaching, I imagine, or how, how are you able to help guys, like say a guy's listening, it's like, I, I need to connect with Ray. Like, how do, how do I even begin to do that? And what's the process of setting themselves free and yeah. with, with your help? Yeah. Anytime anybody comes back from any type of operation, military operation, uh, peacetime yeah. or wartime, you have to do an after action. Uh, and a lot of times when guys come back from war, they come back to a unit and they debrief right? Mm-hmm. They give you like what went right, what went wrong, what worked, what didn't work, what's changed, what's not the same, what, what we need to double up on. Yeah. And these war stories serve as the primary means of, of development. And this is how we will start to change our training and change our, our uh, mindsets and get ready for the next battle. And that's, that's exactly what I do with the Becoming Men podcast. I bring men on and we talk about their war stories. We mm-hmm. talk about the things they did right, the things that they did wrong, the things right. that they need to change, the things they wish they would have changed a long time ago, because now they, hey, guess what? These are all the consequences. And we share that. And, and I have men just come on, um, international speakers, like guys on the million b- of books sold list, uh, guys that you just would never find yourself in a room with them. And you have for free access to a conversation yeah. with them. So for the guys wanting to get, just get started head yeah. over to the podcast and just start listening to these war stories. There you go. Um, but for the guys that want to take it a step deeper yeah. and the ones that really want to go one-on-one that want to take it to the, to that thing that, that is keeps stopping them or the multiple things that they keep running into the guys that want to get intentional, that want to build more grit, become more disciplined, resilient men. Uh, the ones that really want to be able to wake up in the morning, be able to look at themselves in the mirror and say, man, I am proud of that dude the ones that want to be known by others as somebody that they can trust that is lethal mm-hmm. for the, for those guys. I, I reserve, um, oh, that was one-on-one coaching sessions. How can guys, again, if they're, if they're one of those action takers and they're similar to you saying like, I'm at the end of my rope, I need help. How are they yeah. connecting with you? What's the best way to, to reach out and maybe have a little free coaching session or that, so that sort of thing with you? Yeah. Hey, head over to thebecomingmen.com forward slash coaching. Again, that's thebecomingmen.com forward slash coaching. Mm-hmm. On there, you're going to be able to get connected with me for a free coaching call. Um, really, we're going to be able to dial in on what it is that you want to execute on, what it is that you want to work on, and how it is that I can come alongside of you and help. 
And then what I'm going to do for your listeners, man, is I'm going to go ahead and honor them with a full free uh, coaching session uh, for the first time. That means an Sweet. hour after that 20, that 20, 30 minute co- initial session, uh, just to be able to talk like this through video, um, be able to connect with another man and then get started. That's pretty powerful. That's really, that's of, of huge value. Cause like you said, like you called that, uh, who was your coach again? Andy. Yeah. Andy. Thank you. Uh, you had a, you know, however long conversation with him, just kind of sometimes getting, getting stuff out, you know, but then to yeah. actually be able to walk away with some actionable, you know, guidelines, I think is, is pretty powerful. Cause I do, I do look at someone such as yourself and be like, man, there's something to be said about having the leverage of being in the military where your standards are so high for organization, clarity of purpose or directives, you know, like everything from how you look to how you operate in life. It, it's, you know, we, a lot of times our results are the result of our rituals, you know, and yes. a lot of men lack the, the consistency, the discipline of working out, eating right, the, the mental you know, and, and I feel like in, in some regards, and probably not completely, the military helps support that type of culture, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think, you know, potentially if the guy's resonating with his message and with, with what you're saying, like teaming up with you, even if they're not in the military, <laughs> even if yeah. they don't feel like, uh, you know, maybe they're a little bit intimidated by the whole idea, but that you can meet them where they're at, right, yeah. is, is pretty powerful in having at least one free coaching session, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I'll meet you guys there. Yeah, exactly. Well, Ray, man, thank you so much. I know we could keep on chatting because I've got so many more conversations or or, uh, in my head and the questions about how you show up in your marriage, how you show up with the kids, um, looking at things beyond. We'll have to do a part two sometime. Um, But I really appreciate your time. Thank you for gifting the guys with your, your heart and your knowledge and your commitment towards seeing the best in themselves and and also just walking the talk, just being a man of integrity. So I really appreciate you being on. Right on. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, dude, for sure. Well, there you guys have it. It's uh, Ray De La Nuez uh, coming at you from the Becoming Men podcast. Go to thebecomingmen.com backslash coaching. I believe that's what you said. Um, Have the uh, the one-on-one time with him. And again, if you're scared to do that, if there's resistance there, that probably means then that you really need to do it, (laughs) right? So, Ray, thanks again, brother. Hey, thank you. All right, guys, we'll catch up with you on the next episode of the Becoming Kings podcast. Until we meet again, thanks for joining us. Cheers.